Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 23rd lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. We are in the midst of the sixth module of the course that is deconstruction of modernity. Okay? In deconstruction of modernity, we have the feminist challenge to the central pillars of modernity, then we have towards cultural studies. And then we have the postmodernist challenge to the critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. In the last two lectures, we have already discussed the feminist challenge to critical modernity. And in this lecture today, we are going to discuss deconstruction of modernity through the lens of cultural studies. How cultural studies emerged? Cultural studies is based on few theoretical perspectives. It straddles between Marxism, feminism, postmodernism and the perspective so of the marginalized sections of the society. Okay. Thereby it challenges, it poses key challenge to critical modernism. Okay. In this, in this lecture, I mean in, 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 in cultural studies, response to critical modernity, we are going to discuss three authors. One, E. P. Thompson, The Poverty of Theory, Raymond Williams, two, I mean towards 2000 and thirdly, Michel Foucault. Okay. But again, we will discuss Michel Foucault in detail in the postmodernist challenge. E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams, these two Okay. They represent socialist humanism within cultural studies and, and Michel Foucault represents radical post structuralism. Okay. I am just giving you some kind of background that within cultural studies what do we find? Socialist humanism as well as radical post structuralism. Socialist humanism is represented by E. P. Thompson and, and Raymond Williams and uh, whereas radical post-structuralism is represented through Michel Foucault's works. Okay. Keeping this in mind, we are going to discuss deconstruction of modernity through the lens of cultural studies. Okay. Let us first see how cultural studies emerged as a part of social theory or social thought, political thought. Okay. History of social thought as a differentiation when we mention, if you look at this uh, differentiation, okay. history of social thought as a differentiation from the perspective of cultural studies. Okay. Now, there are three important thought currents which have which have become the hallmarks of cultural studies. Okay. What are those three thought currents? One is based on the way there was a split between the way the split between philosophy on the one hand and history on the other was it was treated, was examined by the Greeks, okay, Greek philosophy. And an important political theorist, uh, Machiavelli, uh, through Machiavelli, we always say that it is Machiavelli's works, in fact, marked the birth of modern political science. And the way industrial revolution, critical thinking, rationality, reasoning capacity, critique to religion, 
I mean the whole project of enlightenment, okay, the way it treated, it started treating economics, anthropology, sociology, history and so on in modern senses, philosophy, history, everything. These three thought currents are extremely important in the context of cultural studies as a part of history of social thought. Okay. Now, why such split occur that between philosophy and history or, or you may say economics and anthropology, why such splits? These splits are also historically conditioned. Okay. Philosophy initially was divided into two parts. One, natural philosophy and two, moral philosophy. Okay. Natural philosophy is alternatively known as science in the modern sense. Science, the term science was coined by Wevel in 19th century. Earlier science was known as natural philosophy. Okay. And moral philosophy the way we today, the way today we treat uh, moral philosophy, I mean, uh, uh, I mean philosophy as a whole, that used to be considered moral philosophy. I mean, not ethics, the world of ethics. Okay, that's why when we when we look at philosophy of science and so on, okay, we tend to combine natural philosophy as well as moral philosophy. Okay, I mean epistemology as well as ethics okay. and why I said that Greeks the way they treated or the, the way they examined the split between philosophy and history must be understood in this context. Okay. History again is based on very important theoretical as well as empirical investigations. Okay. Now, Cultural studies does not want to see such kind of artificial split between philosophy and history or economics and anthropology or sociology. Okay. And why I, I have emphasized more on birth of modern political science by Machiavelli, okay. this is very important in the sense that the, the, the concept of the state the, the, the concept of the citizen, nation, nation building, nationalism and so on, civil society. Okay? All these things emerged through, I mean in, the mod, in, a, in a more modern, modernist sense, okay? these things emerged in a more modernist sense through the works of Machiavelli. Okay? These three important philosophical thought currents must be understood while examining cultural studies response to critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Each of these three simultaneously addresses itself to specialized category of human experience and attempts to project this as account of the whole. Okay. Human experience is very important. Okay. It is not any structure or agency or something, but but it's always we I mean the way the 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 proponents of or the theorists of cultural studies they try to bring about a critique to the linear view of modernity. Human experience is the most significant aspect when you when you examine modernity and its constituents. There are a series of attempts to reverse this, of course, okay. reverse this process. Suppose, for example, Marx and Weber are classic examples. Both link, uh, I mean both Marx as well as Weber, they link economy, polity and culture, so far as human experience is concerned. Okay. Human experience for Marx or Weber cannot be examined in, is in isolation. Human experience must be examined, should be examined in terms of our economy, culture and polity, I mean society. For example, class consciousness, ideology in the case of Marx, okay. in the case of Weber you may say uh, status, religion, culture and so on. Okay. In, in later 
critical versions, the emphasis has generally been on political economy as the central link. Culture is reduced to ideology, status symbols and so on. For example, in structural functionality, okay, the reverse happens and things are abstracted to the point where values appear as an explanation of everything. Critical political economy is then itself specialized to accounts of the institutions of the formal economy and of the state. I mean in, in structural agent, what we find that suppose the state, the structure, the society on the whole, they determine our actions, they determine our human experience. But critical political economy suggests no, our institutions are built uh, are, and we continue to revise our institutions on the basis of human experience. Okay. I mean it is the, the, the relationship between practice and norm, which is prior, practice or norm, practice is prior to, to norms for, for the proponents of critical political economy. For, for, for the proponents of st structural religion or structural functional religion, okay. norms are prior to, to practices. Okay. But for the proponents of cultural studies, feminists, Marxists, critical political economy, okay, practices are prior to the formulation of norms. Once norms are formulated, okay, what uh, the proponents of cultural studies they, they argue, or the proponents of Marxism they argue that once I mean practices human experience, it leads to the, the evolution of norms and once norms are formulated, norms also try to regulate our practices. Norms try to at times dictate our practices. And when our practices undergo change, we also tend to make certain changes in our norms. Okay. There is a dialectical relationship between practice and norms. For, for the proponents of cultural studies, feminism, Marxism, critical political economy. Okay. But for structural functionalists, for structuralists, okay, norms are prior norms always try to regulate our practices. Okay. It is always norm, it is, a, it, is, it is the normative framework which guides our practices. Practices do not determine what kind of norms we are going to have okay, in structuralist case. But in the case of cultural studies and so on, practices are prior, practices lead to the evolution of norms, designing of norms and so on. And there is a dialectical relationship between practices, practices and norms. Okay. Once that is why nothing is static, even our practice undergoes change and those change, changed and changing practices, they also try to transform our norms. That is why norms are also not static, norms are also dynamic. Nothing is static in this world, okay. everything is dynamic. For, for the proponents of cultural studies, Marxism and so on. Okay. This is very important. Then if this is so that, that, that there is an attempt to deconstruct modernity, I mean deconstruct one singular view about modernity or put, if I have to put it very succinctly that, that, that while, while making an attempt to deconstruct modernity, these three perspectives that we, we are discussing feminism, uh, cultural studies and, and postmodernism. Okay. Cultural studies joins, suppose we have we, we discussed earlier, okay, there is an analogy between feminism and Marxism. Now we are going to discuss how cultural studies makes an attempt to join feminism in the attempt to broaden the categories used, we will discuss one by one. Okay. When I say cultural studies joins feminism in the attempt to broaden the categories used, I mean what are those categories? Maybe gender, maybe religion, maybe region, maybe caste, maybe class. Now we must broaden the, these categories. 
we cannot reduce everything to to one particular category we must widen the scope and ambit of these categories okay now the way normally in general the way the poor suffer okay economically poor people they suffer okay now there is if i have to reduce everything to economically poor sections of the society okay cultural studies objects this okay cultural studies maintains that you see economically poor people they constitute one of the marginalized sections of the society okay in this case then women also constitute one of the marginalized sections of the society hills it also constitutes one of the marginalized sections of the society religious minorities okay they also constitute one of the um, uh, marginalized sections of the society many categories can be created okay not simply economic consideration but also many social considerations political considerations um, uh, cultural considerations and so on okay they must be uh, we must try to i mean cultural studies always makes an attempt to broaden such categories culture the proponents of cultural studies make an attempt to include culture without reduction what is this now whatever we suggest whatever we do our human experience it must be culturally mediated okay but i cannot just say that everything is reduced to culture no so these people very often say no no everything is reduced to economy everything is reduced to polity no cultural studies scholars drawn from cultural studies they don't try to reduce everything to culture they try to include culture in their attempt to broaden such categories without any reduction okay and and by doing that the proponents of cultural studies they tend to generate a more adequate holism or totality okay this is very important then in this lecture we will look at two influential sources for cultural studies two influential sources but three influential thinkers okay those two influential sources of for cultural studies i mean one is socialist humanism and the other radical post structuralism socialist humanism is very often seen or is is uh, is represented through the works of ep thompson and raymond williams and radical post structuralism is represented through the works of michel foucault i mean there are very different accounts I mean, there is a there is a difference between socialist humanism uh, uh, on the one hand and radical post structuralism on the other uh but but we will also try to look at certain similarities between socialist humanism on the one hand and and radical post structuralism on the other i mean why uh, we are using the 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 term marginal status okay these two perspectives they have been given marginal status in social theory political theory why precisely because they look at that they both these two perspectives i mean socialist humanism as well as radical post structuralism okay they tend to provide perspectives rather than theories i mean perspectives are more than more important than theories what is a perspective okay a perspective refers to a set of symbols which human beings used to select from all potentially observable aspects of nature when i say nature it includes both natural and social phenomena thereby i tend to widen the scope and ambit of nature okay and i mean a perspective is above all a viewpoint what kind of a viewpoint a perspective is is a viewpoint which enables us in in selecting okay one in selecting to organizing our perceptions and three in guiding our actions okay 
there are three important things in, in a person selection organization of perceptions and thirdly it must guide our actions okay when i say this selection organization of perceptions which guide our actions okay people may say that no perception and perspective are same no perception is different from perspective perception when i say it is the immediate contact that individuals have with nature but when i tend to organize my perceptions then i tend to arrive at a perspective okay perception becomes perspective only when perceptions are organized okay that's why i said a perspective refers to a set of symbols which human beings used to select from all potentially observable aspects of nature i repeat i reiterate this point when i say nature it includes both natural and social phenomena a perspective is above all a viewpoint that helps us in selecting organizing our perceptions and guiding our actions okay we don't tend to look at everything we, we tend to select suppose this is a room i can select something you can you may not select that you may select something else okay that's a it is up to us up, it is up to our perspective that we use these things we 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 tend to select okay in this sense the proponents of cultural studies they tend to emphasize more on perspectives than theory okay cultural studies as a school of thought it hasn't yet been able to establish any coherent school okay suppose like functionality marxism okay uh, they have not yet been able to formulate these things i mean cultural studies okay though cultural studies has not yet been able to establish any coherent school it has taught people to think and work in new ways it has taught people to think in and through a problem it has taught people to think and work in novel ways this is very important that's why there are the the i mean both socialist humanism as well as radical post structuralism okay they they are very different accounts but you will find surprising similarities because both these schools of thought okay both these perspectives rather okay, they i mean uh, they have been accorded marginal status within social and political theory precisely because they tend to stress more on perspectives than theories they haven't yet been able to establish coherent schools but but they have taught people to think and work in new ways okay now let us see socialist humanism and then we'll move on to radical post structuralism okay now let us first see very uh, i mean uh, let us examine in detail okay the the uh, uh, what kind of response that socialist humanism gave to critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the works of ep thompson and raymond williams okay ep thompson and raymond williams what we generally find their works are mostly derived from the western marxist tradition their works are derived basically from western marxist theoretical trajectory okay in western marxism what we have discussed in the works of georg lukacs antonio gramsci and and alan turing okay this is very important that that ep thompson and raymond williams they they were very much influenced by western marxist intellectual trajectory but their works are informed by lower middle class lower middle class or working class background and grassroots political activism in the post communist party regime their their arguments the way they make okay uh, i mean uh, suppose for marx there was a base and a superstructure economy was the base for marx okay and on the superstructure that that marx suggested that 
all these polity, religion, ideology, everything will will be dictated by your economy. Okay. But Raymond Williams as well as E. P. Thompson, they did not buy this argument. For them, there is nothing called the base or superstructure model. Okay. At times economy may be base, at times culture may be base, at times religion may be base, at times polity may be base, uh, uh, base uh, state may be the base, um, uh, your nationality may be the base, okay. not simply economy. Okay. And superstructure can also vary. Okay. The arguments in favor of the refusal of base superstructure model that E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams provided that your economic culture, polity, religion, uh, region, okay, they cannot be isolated like this. They must be examined in terms of their intersectionality. Okay. Separated levels cannot be isolated like this. For, for E. P. Thompson, even our politics, our economics are also cultural. For Raymond Williams, even our culture is materially conditioned, right? It is very important to see. Okay. For 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 E. P. Thompson as well as Raymond Williams, okay. I mean, importance must be given to to whole way of life or whole way of struggle. For Marx, what was more important? If, if economy was the base, and all religion, ideology, and so on, there they they constitute superstructure. The importance in the Marxist tradition was given to mode of production. Whereas, in the tradition of cultural studies, okay, importance has been given to whole way of life, whole way of struggle. Okay. That is why for E. P. Thompson, politics and economics are also cultural, whereas and, and for Raymond Williams, culture is material, culture is materially conditioned. Okay. Now, then what is this culture all about? For E. P. Thompson and and Raymond Williams, okay, we will we'll discuss one by one. I mean, in the context of social movements, holism or totality, and then reflexivity and rationality. Okay, all four we will discuss. I mean, in the context of culture, that is social movements for for E. P. Thompson uh, as well as Raymond Williams, because uh, politics and economics are also cultural and. What is then the culture? Culture is also material. Okay. Then, for for so far as social movements are concerned, how did, how do E. P. Thompson and and Raymond Williams try to capture culture? Okay. For them, for E. P. Thompson, it is always culture is always related to certain classes. That is class culture. Okay. For Thompson, when he said class culture. It is the development of class consciousness idea. Okay. There is close attention to anthropology of popular culture. Okay. I mean, language and ritual, needs and expectations, formation of resistant popular formation of resistant uh, popular agents. What is this popular culture? Popular culture is represented by the masses, mass culture. Okay. High culture is represented through elites. Whereas, popular culture is represented through socially, economically, politically, culturally marginalized sections of the society. Okay? That is why Thompson's examination of anthropology of popular culture okay, may be made through language and ritual, needs and expectations, formation of resistant popular uh, agency and so on. For E. P. Thompson, human experience as a junction concept between between domination, uh, subordination, subjugation, and exploitation on the one hand, and formation of political and cultural resistance on the other. Okay, human experience also tends to move away from domination. Move wants to move away from human experience. Always wants to uh, uh, move away from exploitation subjugation, subordination and so on. Okay. But when it moves away, okay, where does it lead to? It leads to the formation of, of organized intellectually and politically more conscious resistance. 
political and cultural register. I mean then that class culture development of class okay, if you can slightly recall Marx's notion of class, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation. Okay. For Weber classes are represent I mean there are two components of class one is life chances the other causal components. There are different ways to look at classes. For Thompson in his uh, the poverty of theory that he suggested that that class culture okay, that development of class consciousness idea must be located or, or must be situated in the world of human experience. Okay. That is why class as relation or as experience. That is why when, when Marx said uh, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation, what does he mean? What did he mean by that? I mean classes are constituted not on the basis of income that one earns, but on the basis of the position that one occupies or the functions uh, that one performs in the process of production. Okay? Then there is a relationship between different classes. The relation is not simply of, of relation of domination and subordination, but exploitation. That is why class as a relation must be experienced. Okay. Class culture and human experience okay, must be understood together. Okay. For, for Raymond Williams, as he, he mentioned that you know, culture is material, for Raymond Williams, culture in lived experience, human experience, our lived practices, lived experiences and so on. It may include place, community, kinship and so on. Okay. There must be a close analysis of formation of cultural production as material institutions and not simply disembodied authors. Okay. For, for Raymond Williams, okay, I mean the formation of analysis of formation of cultural production as material institutions and not simply disembodied authors. I mean that, that lived experience cannot be isolated from, from culture, uh, from uh, our economy, from our polity and so on. They cannot be, they are very much embodied, not disembodied. Okay. Raymond Williams also emphasized on the recovery of class relation or class experience within a particular language. That is why some language, some forms of language, they dominate other forms of language. Okay. Some languages, you, I hope you, all of you know that uh, certain languages, they dominate others. Okay. Uh, I mean, in India, English has been able to dominate all other languages. Right? Okay. And the kind, that, that, that particular language, Okay. The way it produces and reproduces different class relations or class experiences. Okay. And it then when, when, when you tend to make concerted political and cultural resistance against such domination, against such exploitation, then culture becomes a very important variable okay, to, to bring about social movement. Now, now when we when we come to the to the uh, I mean Cal, uh, e. P. Thompson uh, I mean socialist humanist response to critical modernism through the works of Thompson and Williams. Okay, when you look at how holistic explanation that that Thompson and Williams provide for E. P. Thompson, there is a distrust of overly sophisticated abstractions. As, as an exercise in intellectual closure. Okay. And that is why there we must understand the dialectical relationship between um, experience and thought. Theory cannot be generated in vacuum. Theories have never been generated in vacuum on their own. Theories have been generated only through human experience. If there is no human experience, then we cannot generate any theory. If there is no human experience, we cannot generate any, any form of knowledge. And E. P. Thompson's The Poverty of Theory okay, 
is a classic example where he mentioned that uh, as, as the capitalist relations of production as the kernel of society. Okay? They are very important uh, dimensions of society uh, that, that the mode of production has, has brought about. When, when E.P. Thompson emphasizes more on, uh, I mean emphasizes particularly on capitalist relations of production, I mean as a mode of production, Raymond Williams immediately says, suggests that no, no, it is not mode of production, but it is a whole, whole way of life, whole way of struggles. That is why there is a distrust of specialization for Raymond Williams uh, that aims for loser, but more encompassing con uh, concepts, lose, but coherent. Okay. Now, I mean in, in towards 2000, he, he wrote that from mode of production to way of life. Uh, e. P. Thompson's work, I mean, The Poverty of Theory, uh, Raymond Williams, Culture and Materialism and so on. Okay. Now, E. P. Thompson, so far as reflexivity and rationality are concerned, okay, Thompson emphasizes more on artisan model of determination by material data of theory, I mean, uh, interaction working with the material, okay, Thompson's. And, and he refused, Thompson refused such inductive analytic reasoning in abstraction from lived experience of subjects, okay, sharp refusal, okay, I mean from particular instances to general statement that is inductive reasoning, okay. There is an implicit identification with subjects and relevance to present day struggles, okay, and E. P. Thompson emphatically mentioned what is rationality? That must be dialectic rationality. Okay, and 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 we'll we'll discuss uh, uh, Raymond Williams how he used. He said no, it is not dialectic rationality, but synthetic rationality. We'll we'll discuss this. Okay, I mean, what is this dialectic rationality? Dialectic rationality doesn't aim at or claim neutrality. Dialectic rationality always attempts to interact with material. I mean, culture. Culture is material. And, and using it in present day context. Okay? And, and E. P. Thompson's strategy of circularity between material and concepts in the poverty of theory, okay? the, the, the central question of whether this is a search for truth or more likely a search for present day meaning in history, okay? this is very important. For, for Raymond Williams okay, uh, was, uh, was very much influenced uh, uh, by the Frankfurt School, I mean, in Germany, okay, I mean, uh, that critique of dominative mode attitude uh, to world, other self as uh, raw material. For Williams, there is a need to connect with lived experience, reflexive position, lived experience of emotion and so on, okay. I mean, there is nothing called the rationality for, for Raymond Williams or E. P. Thompson. For, for Thompson, it is dialectic rationality. Okay. For, for Raymond Williams, it is synthetic rationality. I mean, refusal of specialized rationality. There is an implicit reliance on fully human nature of the author or writer or the self or the individual. Okay. That is that synthetic rationality or reflexivity in refusal of separation between private emotion and public analysis private feeling and uh, culture on the one hand, public economy and politics on the other. Okay. Th th this cannot be uh, separated just like that. Okay. There must be a relationship. There we must provide synthetic rationality or reflexive. And what we generally find that you will, you will tend to find humanism or socialist humanism in both the works of, in the works of both. Uh, Thompson as well as Williams. Okay, that that humanism in both cases, okay, socialist humanism in both cases. I mean, there is a radical use of language of fully developed human being and of human needs. I mean, meaning versus systems of domination and exploitation, human commonality and class difference must be understood. Okay, and there must be an analysis of implicitly grounded in said humanity 
and shared class struggle. Okay. In so in this lecture we have discussed deconstruction of modernity through the lens of cultural studies, through the works of E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams. I mean this I mean we have covered only one part of cultural studies that is socialist humanism. Okay. In the next lecture we are going to discuss radical post structuralism through the works of Michel Foucault. Thank you.